And the Pirate is making an appearance. Mississippi State and the Georgia Bulldogs on an SEC Network primetime showcase game. The two and four Bulldogs from Starkville taking on the four and two Bulldogs from Athens, GA. And it's all coming your way here in a matter of moments. And welcome to SEC Saturday Night Football presented by Auto Owners Insurance as Mississippi State and Georgia take the field under the lights. A magical night. About 20,000 fans will be in attendance and the big talk around Athens has been about quarterbacks. And speaking of quarterbacks, joining me tonight is our quarterback DJ Shockley and Lauren Sisler down on the sidelines. So glad you could be with us as the Bulldogs open a new era as JT Daniels will get the start under center for the Georgia Bulldogs tonight. I think folks around these parts have been waiting for his appearance and it's finally here. Now this guy came out of high school with so many accolades, was the national player of the year, led his high school team modern day to a national championship. And then what, what should have been his senior year of high school, he started 11 games for the Southern Cal Trojans. But then last year in game number one, this is what happened. On a sack, tore an ACL and his meniscus. And it's been 14 months since he's been able to take a snap in a live football game. And he'll have that opportunity tonight as Georgia ties to reconstruct an offense to try to put some more points on the board. And DJ Shockley, you've been here, man. You have been in this situation. Tell me what's going through his mind right now. Dave, it's going to be exciting to watch him go out and play today. I think he's, there's going to be a little angst, a little anxiety. Maybe he's a little excited, too, but this is an opportunity that he's looked for for a long time since he left USC. Now he has the opportunity now to start. And I know a lot of Georgia fans are looking forward to see him in this offense tonight. Well, we definitely know who's going to start for the Mississippi State Bulldogs, and it is the true freshman Will Rogers who was committed to Washington State before Mike Leach got the job in Starkville and followed him to Starkville. And he is now the signal caller, 71% completion percentage. There are some things to like about him. What do you like about him, especially what he did in his last start against Vanderbilt? Yeah, last week he did an outstanding job of taking care of the football. No interceptions. That's something that has hampered this Mississippi State offense is turnovers. He did a good job of quick, easy, getting the ball out of his hands, made some really good decisions with the football. But most importantly, he gives this offense a chance to move the chains and go down the field. And he has a vertical passing game. They look forward to him. They're playing a big style of ball today. Well, it has been kind of a bizarre world in all of college football around the country, around the world. But at Mississippi State, things have really gotten bizarre in the last 24 hours. For more on that story, let's go down and visit with Lauren Sisler. Yeah, I would say bizarre is an understatement. After the latest round of COVID testing, Mississippi State is now down to 49 scholarship players. That under the 53 threshold. But I'll tell you what, the schools decided that they wanted to move forward this along with the league office. And when you look at the scope of things, eight players became unavailable just this week alone. But it starts with Mike Leach, and he says he wants to always see his players play excited. That is the culture he's trying to instill here. These guys are not giving up. And I'll tell you what, they're playing with a lot of energy and enthusiasm, and you can see it out here on the sidelines tonight. Well, thanks, Lauren. And, and obviously with Coach Leach, he preaches two things. Do your job and play the next play and do those over and over and over again. And that his team is going to have to do that tonight against this Georgia Bulldog team. It's eager to get back on the field. Kirby Smart talking to us yesterday in our meetings about this team is ready to go. You know, disappointment last week, getting ready for a game, and it didn't happen. He said it took a couple of days to get this team I guess refocus, but they have had great, a, a great week of practice, and he's excited to see his team on the field. Yeah, they shot in the gut. Found out on Wednesday this team was not going to play, and he's had to restructure his whole entire way to go about a game plan. But they're finally back on the field, and looking forward to a, a, a good matchup tonight in prime time. Well, Mississippi State wins the toss, and well, you know it, they accept. They want the football, so they will return this one. And Mississippi State coming off a Vanderbilt win. They had dropped four straight after that LSU opening victory. And we'll try to keep the momentum going here on the road. And a fair catch called for around the five-yard line by Lee Witherspoon. So that'll come out to the 25-yard line. And here's this Mississippi State offense. And, well, things got off to such a great start. But uh, they have kind of been stuck in the mud since that opening game. And they're turning to this freshman, Will Rogers. And in terms of distributing the football, what's his main goal today? 
Well, he has to get the football out of his hands. This Georgia defensive front is very active. They get after the quarterback, but he has to make quick decisions with the football and allow his guys on the perimeter to make some plays for him. He held on to the ball a little bit too much last week versus Vanderbilt and took some bad sacks. Tonight, he has to do a better job of getting rid of that football when it's time to throw it. Quavius Marks in the backfield along with Will Rogers. Marks from just down the road in Atlanta, GA, the true freshman in the backfield. You know he's excited to suit it up tonight. Rogers dumps it off underneath. Those passes caught out over the 30 to the 31 yard line goes Jaden Wally. Good start for the Mississippi State Bulldogs. Yeah, that's the number one thing for this Mississippi State offense is first down execution, but also being patient in the pass game. If Will Rogers can be patient and allow this offense to matriculate itself down the field, and they got a good chance of getting some first downs and moving this ball down the field. Yeah, set you up, uh, set themselves up nicely here with a second down and four from the 31 after that six-yard pickup. Rogers again goes underneath. Georgia drops way off, and that pass is caught by Cameron Gardner. That'll be his ninth catch of the year. And this is what's different for Georgia. Georgia's used to playing press man coverage on the outside, bringing a lot of guys from the secondary. Now we've seen for the past six, seven weeks, teams have played this rush three, drop eight coverage against Mississippi State. And you see, he's just checking it down and taking what the defense has given him. First down and 10. Georgia defense giving up 21 points a game this year, 345 yards of offense. Inside handoff, a rare run play. But you know, we talked about that LSU game when they threw for over 600 yards and they beat LSU 44-34. But since then, shock, it has not been the same story. Matter of fact, you go down the point totals, 14-2, 14, and a goose egg last week put up 24. Yeah, they haven't had a 300-yard pass game in the last four ball games. That tells you that the distribution hasn't been there and the offensive execution hasn't been there either. Second down and eight from the 40. Cross to Marks and really nowhere to run against the black jerseys of the Bulldogs. Kirby was hinting that the Georgia Bulldogs may bust out the black jerseys this week. I think it's something that he's kind of uh, told to his players, hey, once a year we'll get a chance to do this, and especially on a night game, prime time, uh, put them on display so I know the players get excited to wear the black jerseys. This defense out to prove a little something tonight after giving up 470 yards to Florida. And also gave up over 400 to Alabama. Just a different year in college football. But Georgia still thinks they're perhaps the best defense in the country. Over the middle. That pass is caught for a first down inside the 40-yard line. There is the true freshman, Jaden Wally. And Coach Lee said he was going to get these young guys in. He wasn't lying. Yeah, this is one of the young guys they really love watching. We got a chance to see him all week this week. And you see a nice, easy catch. And he finds the hole in that zone and catches it and comes down with a big third down conversion and give the quarterback Will Rogers a lot of credit standing there and firing the strike deal on third down. Will Rogers three out of three throwing the football to start this game. First down and ten. Dylan Johnson in at running back and he will get this handoff working the left side and he'll pick up three maybe four before he stopped there. Remember Kylan Hill who was their senior running back uh, so much expected of him this year is uh, no longer on this team so they've turned it over to two true freshmen in the backfield along with their true freshman quarterback and we've seen the true freshman Jaden Wally make a couple of catches already I mean that's crazy to think about that in SEC football yeah the execution from those young guys and they've been thrust into this position to make plays and Mike Lee says hey we're gonna throw them in the fire and see what they can do Second down and six, another underneath pass. That'll be inside the 30 to the 29. That's going to be a little bit short of the line of game. So a third down coming up. Now this is where they want to be. You, you see rushing three here, getting the football out of his hands, quick, easy decision, and then Georgia rallying to the football. But the first third down was third and four. Now you have another third down. It's third and one or two here. This is where they want to live offensively, where they can have the run pass option in the ballgame. 
Third down and one. Dylan Johnson stays in the game at running back. Good opening drive from Mississippi State. Eighth play of this drive coming up. They will swing it out to Johnson. He has the first down to the 21-yard line. And this is where they want to catch Georgia in man coverage. The tight split from the top, and the defensive back who has him in man coverage has to go over the top, and that frees him up for leverage on the edge and a nice easy pitch and catch and another third down conversion for this Mississippi State offense. Well-designed play by Mike Leach and really great decision by Will Rogers. Mississippi State came in just 32% on third downs, 13th in the league. Set up a little screen here and will be a gain of about eight and a half. And this is nothing but an extension of the run game here. Throwing it out a little screen to the outside, you call it a little tone screen and you see first on first down, they've done a really good job of just picking up positive yards. So on second and third down, they're easier calls. These are good things to get your quarterback in rhythm. And right now, Coach Leach has Will Rogers in a really good rhythm on his first drive. Yeah, I'd say so. Seven of seven to start this game. We'll send Devontae Payton in motion. He'll set up at the slot of the far side on a second down and two. Georgia coming with some pressure. Rogers almost picked off. Lucky that Tyreek Stevenson was a step late, or that one could have been going the other way. Yeah, Dan Lanning had enough of this sitting back in three and yeah. rushing. He's brought a little pressure to get that football in that mind. Things to happen a little bit quicker for Will Rogers down here in the red zone. I would expect to see even more pressure here on third down to see if the young quarterback can make a quick decision to get the ball out of his hand. No surprise here. Just a couple of rushes on the 10 plays to this point for Mississippi State. Looking at another third down coming up. Two out of two so far on this drive. Pass is caught down around the nine-yard line, and that'll be good enough for the first down. It'll be first and goal for Mississippi State. Yeah, another easy, quick decision. Georgia looked like they were going to bring pressure in on the snap of the football, bailed out of it. And then another just pitch and catch on the outside from Will Rogers to his receiver. You know, with, and with a depleted roster in terms of numbers, obviously chewing up some of this clock is a critical issue for Mississippi State, and they're doing it on this opening drive. Marks and Johnson in the backfield now along with Rogers. Osiris Mitchell goes in motion, but they'll come near side and get it off to Jaquavius Marks. Well, that is just not good in terms of touchdown percentage. Coaches would love to see that around 60 to 70 percent. They can live in that area, but 37 percent can't live there. Yeah, they've also struggled turning the football over in the red zone. They've, you know, moved the football up and down the field on people, but once they get down here, they struggle. Second down and goal from the six-yard line. Georgia bringing the heat again. Rodgers throws it up in the air, and that one's incomplete. Trying to hit Javante Payton. Well, this is where Georgia wants to live. They want to live in your face. Press man coverage on the outside, trying to hit this corner route, coming back to the outside. He just stymies him there, and nothing there. Really good job on the outside, and good coverage. Now third and goal. Play number 14, a drive that's gone 69 yards. The delay handoff. Marks takes it down to the three and a half yard line before he is stopped there by a slew of black jerseys. I know Mississippi State would have loved to come in here and get seven points here, but just look at how many hats come to the football here. Watch the red helmets fly to the football once the ball is handed off. And just a nice job of getting off blocks up front by Trayvon Walker. And then you see other red helmets get to the ball here. So Georgia gets the stop and forces the field goal. 
Brandon Ruiz, the grad transfer from Arizona State, has been pretty solid. Four out of five on the year. It is long, a 43 against LSU. This went on the way, and it is good. 21-yard field goal, so a lengthy drive by Mississippi State, and they strike first. They lead it three to nothing here in Athens. Dr. Pepper Fansville giving fans the keys to the game. And Shock, break this one down for us. Yeah, for Mississippi State, we just saw it on offense. First down efficiency is a must. Doing really good there. They did in that first drive, and they have to put a fence around the run game for Georgia. You know they want to run the football. For Georgia, on the line of scrimmage, you're going to run it, you got to control it, and then tackle in space once Mississippi State drops it down and throws it for 40 attempts this ball game. You got to make sure you tackle well in space, and you see some of the guys who are going to be key players in this ball game. Both backs, I think, will have a huge ball game and an outcome of what happens. Great opening drive for Will Rogers. He went 9 of 11 for 63 yards on that opening possession. Georgia will try to respond as that kick sails into the end zone and out to the 25-yard line. And that means that we will see number 1-8, JT Daniels, a 6-3, 210-pound redshirt sophomore. The transfer from Southern Cal get his first look in a Georgia Bulldog uniform. And you know the excitement level for him is through the roof right now. And Georgia looking for that spark, and maybe this is it right here. Yeah, the first thing you think about when you see him, when you go back and watch him at USC tape, you look at some of the downfield throws. He's a vertical threat throwing the football. is something Georgia hasn't had in a few weeks. The line up in the pistol, first play, the handoff off the left side, and Mississippi State all over it as the handoff went to Zamir White. Brought down by Emmanuel Forbes, a true freshman in that Mississippi State secondary. But there is no doubt that JT Daniels has waited a while. You know, so many people were expecting him to play early on. They thought maybe that he would get the start in the opening game, but he just wasn't physically ready. And I think the coaches and the medical staff just felt like he needed to be more mobile as a quarterback instead of just being a statue. He just couldn't move after that leg surgery, but they feel like he's in a great spot now, and he hits his first completion of the game with George Pickens and the Bulldogs of Georgia are happy to see Mr. Pickens back on the field as well after missing a couple of games. Yeah, that'll help you when you have one of your big playmakers on the field for you. But you see it right away. Good decisions. Mississippi State comes with the blitz. He knows exactly where he needs to go with the football, has an out, has an answer, and therefore you have a big game. Line up out of that pistol formation. And off left side. James Cook with that handoff. Let's go down the sidelines. Lord. Yeah, Dave, you mentioned there there were a lot of questions as to why JT might have not started sooner. But according to the coaching staff, he really wasn't healthy and ready to go until the last couple of weeks. But he stayed the course, gotten the reps in, and has prepared for this opportunity to start for the Bulldogs. They also feel that the skill players around him are playing at their best, which, of course, is a benefit for him as he gets broken in, so to speak. Yeah, you know, I mean, listen, we, we talked to Todd Monken about it as well, and he said, you know, he's got an unbelievable arm. We just got to have, I mean, he's a good athlete, but he's not the kind of guy that's going to scramble for a bunch of yards, and that one's batted down, nearly picked off. Aaron Brule, perhaps their best linebacker, at least playing at that level right now, he and Errol Thompson with a great play. Yeah, Georgia goes double slant. He just has to see defenders. He's looking at spots right now. And it's going to take time for him to understand the speed of how the game goes different from practice. And Lauren just mentioned it. There's going to be a lot of things he has to get used to in game that's going to allow him to play at a high level. So now it's third down and nine. Ball sits at the 48-yard line of Mississippi State. So Mississippi State bringing some pressure. JT Daniels nowhere to go, and he's dropped back around the 45-yard line. So Mississippi State will force the punting situation. Yeah, and this is part of understanding the ball game. They bring pressure. Georgia's offensive line does a pretty good job of picking it up. Now, this is where he has to get rid of the football. You can't sit in there and take this, throw this football away, or escape outside the pocket. And that's part of understanding awareness inside the pocket. One of the things that they talked about is a big issue early in the season for JT Daniels. Just seeing the field and knowing when to throw that football away is going to be important. So the punt will be 
Caught around the 10 yard line. So Mississippi State up a field goal with the football. Back in a moment. SEC Network Football is presented by Auto Owners Insurance. Simple human sense. Look at that guy go, huh? Who was number three? Looks like Superman out there. Who is that guy? I don't know who that guy is. Somebody need to put an APB out on that guy. Who is that young man? That was my <laughs> man, DJ Shockley. Back in 2005, playing quarterback for the Georgia Bulldogs. Let him do an SEC championship. First and 10 for Mississippi State. 25th meeting between these two Bulldogs. Shock, you remember that game? Still I do, fresh, I do. It's still fresh in your mind? It does. I remember the Cowbills. Mississippi State fans have the Cowbills. They're loud. They're proud. I mean, it was an awesome environment that night. You know, those shoulder pads were a little big, too, now. <laughs> big shoulder pads. Just saying. Just saying. Here's Will Rogers trying to scramble free and does so and makes a nice throw. Hey, our next SEC story is titled No Experience Required. Premieres Tuesday at 9 Eastern. It's the story of Texas A&M's famed 12th man tradition and Jackie Sherrill's idea to have his 1983 kickoff coverage team be made up of non-scholarship walk-ons. It's a great story that still lives today. Can't wait for that SEC story. Coming up. Tuesday at 9 Eastern. So on second down and four, Rodgers throws the out, and let's see if that is incomplete. It'll be incomplete. It'll be third down and four coming up. So a good opening drive, certainly for this Mississippi State team, as they marched it down the field, ended up with a field goal, a 21-yard field goal. But obviously for Will Rodgers, confidence on the road has got to be a huge thing right now. Yeah, and that's the number one thing is Coach Leach got him some quick, easy throws to start this ball game. He had some players on the outside make some plays for him, and they were good on first down, similar as they are on this drive. You got a third and four. This is where Mississippi State wants to live, especially throwing the football. Rodgers, again, underneath. Nowhere for March to go. He'll be a couple of yards shy of the line to gain, so it looks like Mississippi State will bring in their punting unit. So Georgia does get the stop here. Nice play there by Nicobe Dean, that sophomore linebacker. 49 stops on the year. Now give him 50, which leads his team. Yeah, he flashes every time I turned on the tape. He's a guy that is all over the field and made tackles, plays sideline to sideline. Very cerebral player as well. And that's exactly what Coach Lanning asked for is, hey, when they throw it, let's check it down and let's go make a tackle. Actually, six tackles already <laughs> for Kobe Dean in this game as Mississippi State will punt this away. Reed Bowman will put his right foot into it. Here's Jackson back to return this. It'll hit the turf and take a favorable Mississippi State bounce down to the 31-yard line. So Georgia's offense back on the field. Thank you, Jari. Love Basil. Another young, good quarterback in this conference, getting a lot of work in this uh, crazy season. Kind of a free year for everybody, right? Yeah. So why not play your young guys? Dave Neal, DJ Shockley, Will and Sissel down the sidelines. Glad you could join us tonight. Georgia's second possession of the game. First and ten, they'll swing it out to George Pickens, and he'll pick up eight yards on that one. DJ, obviously these two teams love to throw it to their backs out of the backfield. And we two really good ones. James Cook making a bunch of catches in the backfield. But they'll hand it off here. They'll go with Zamir White running hard out over the 45 and drives a couple of Mississippi State players with him to the 48. But this is a big part of both these teams' offenses. Yeah, you, you speak of versatility. These two guys have some versatile in their ball game. And you think about some of the routes they can run. Look similar to what a receiver can run on the outside. But these are some of the things they have done this year that have been really successful. You've seen it for James Cook in the Florida and Alabama game being a threat on the outside. March is another guy who 38 receptions on the year. These guys, when they get the ball in space, they are just as dangerous as receivers. Jermaine Burton goes in motion. Three receivers to the wide side of the field. JT Daniels will go that way, and Burton picks the pass. He makes a couple of guys miss and picks up six and a half, maybe seven yards. We're under two minutes to go in this opening quarter. Mississippi State drove it down for an opening 
field goal on their very first possession of the game. JT Daniels gets his first start on Georgia's first drive, which took a sack and forced the Bulldogs to punt, and this is his second possession. It's hard to believe we only have a minute and 25 left to go in the opening quarter. It's, it has flown by. Yeah, this city state, I'm sure this is exactly how they drew it up. Try to take some of the game out of the hands of this Georgia offense. And the pistol, they'll run it left side. They'll go with White, and they'll take it to the Mississippi State 40. Actually falls forward to around the 39-yard line. Boy, they what, Zemir White can really punish you between the tackles. Yeah, physical, downhill, runs behind his pass type of guy. Scored a touchdown in every ball game this season. It's physical when he has the ball in his hand. Play fake it to White. Get the pass off. And there's George Pickens again with another catch. Boy, it's good to see George out there. Just a couple of games away. 13 catches on the year. And I think people are obviously bothered by some injuries. But, I mean, this is a dude that people, after his freshman season, thought, I mean, like, <laughs> All-American this year. It just hasn't played out that way. And coaches even told us he was a little frustrated early in the season. Yeah, he's just like any other big play receiver who's the number one receiver on his team. He wants to get the football, and you see three catches already. They're getting him acclimated into the ball game early, so that frustration doesn't doesn't well up. Hand off to Cook, and he goes nowhere. Got back to the line of scrimmage, and that is it. And that will do it for the first 15 minutes of play from Athens GA between the hedges. Mississippi State hasn't won in Athens since 1956, but they lead it by three after 15 minutes. Well, Ugga, like most of us, have had to quarantine. So Ugga has stayed home. No games at Sanford Stadium. Can't hang out on Dooley Field. But you know what? When you have a big piece of meat like that laid on the grill, <laughs> probably not a bad thing. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome back to SEC Saturday Night Football presented by Auto Owners Insurance. Glad Ugga's doing well during this COVID-19 era. And Georgia thing? looking for a third down and 11. JT Daniels going up top, trying to get it all right here. And double coverage in the end zone, trying to find George Pickens. Mississippi State all over it. It'll be fourth down, but a flag is down. You see around the three-yard line. Yeah, you're gonna get PI because this ball was severely underthrown, but Pickens had this guy beat by two or three yards, and if this ball's thrown out there, it's Pass touchdown. Interference. Defense number one, 15-yard penalty for the previous spot, automatic first down. And it kind of bails Mississippi State out here. You see, he runs by him, and because this ball's so underthrown, he's trying to come back to the football, and the defensive back never looks back for the football. And you're gonna get a pass interference. Oh, no, shot. Wasn't a whole lot. Come on, shot. Come on. There wasn't a whole lot there. They always get them just because they don't turn that head. That's all they're looking for. Yeah. You turn that head around, you got an opportunity, but I'm with you. But it, you got to turn that head around. First down and 10 for Georgia. They'll move it to the 25. And off goes to Samir White. Georgia hadn't run it very effectively to this point. Six yards on the ground. Yeah, this is a good front from Mississippi State. They do a lot of movement up front. They're very active. And you see, they don't give up much in the run game. They've only given up one rushing touchdown in their last two ball games versus Alabama and Vanderbilt. So they are active. They move a lot. Errol Thompson, that middle linebacker, Crumby up front, Kobe Jones, they are a very physical front as well. But the problem with them right now, though, is they don't have a lot of depth. Jordan Davis, Tyra Sweet, a couple of their Sam linebackers unavailable for this game found that out uh, in the last 24 hours so uh, they're only playing with five linebackers in a 3-3 format as that pass is caught on the outside by Jermaine Burton first down Georgia that's a young man at Jermaine Burton here who see the play action here this is what Georgia wants to do run the football and play action and he does it like he's going to run an over route and comes back on the corner route and creates the separation. Burton, a young freshman who has been learning on the job, and Coach Monk and the offensive coordinator said this guy has continued to get better every single week. I think he has an unbelievable skill set. Just uh, tapping into what he can bring to the table here on first and goal now. Another handoff of Mississippi State all over it. 
Cameron Young, a sophomore out of Crosby, Mississippi, getting in there for the tackle. I mean, Cameron Young jumped over a defender to get to him. This guy's 6'3", 320 on that defensive front. And you talk about the athleticism. Guys this big these days can move, and Cameron Young made an outstanding play there where that play could have been a lot more. Second down and goal. That's the movement. Jason Autry, our referee today. Offside, defense, number 52. Half the distance to the goal, second down. The guy that was saying it wasn't me the most, right? <laughs> the guy that was the, guy. the most theatrical in that regard? <laughs> it's usually the guy. Kobe Jones has already graduated with a business degree. They call him the mayor of Starkville from right there at Starkville High School. Got George Pickens at the top of the screen. Looks like man coverage. Daniels batted at the line of scrimmage, and it's incomplete. Third down and goal from about the four. And this is something that George has had an issue with the majority of this season is batted balls. And sometimes it's just about the offensive lineman getting their hands on the ground, but this is a read here. It's a kind of a pass option there. He gets up the field, and you see Cameron Young again making another play on the football. Played a lot of snaps against Vanderbilt. Had his best game with three tackles, one of those behind the line. He'll take a breather now as Georgia looking at a third down and goal, and they'll send Burton in motion again. JT Daniels moving the pocket to the right, to the end zone, and touchdown, Georgia. George Pickens, welcome back, number one. Well, this is what you wanted. You wanted your star receiver lined up one-on-one, -on -one and watch the, the way he moves on this particular play to get open. It's a little comeback on the outside. He's got him tugging and pulling on him, but because the ball is low and outside and away, it gives him an opportunity to go down to get it because he's falling down trying to catch this football. But this is a well-thrown football by JT Daniels where only George Pickens can come away with it, and he comes down with a big touchdown grab for his Bulldogs. JT Daniels with his first touchdown pass in 14 months and his first in a Georgia Bulldog uniform. Jack. Pod Lesney to attempt the point after. Georgia, of course, with 312, make it 313 straight point afters. Haven't missed since 2014. An NCAA record. They take the lead 7 to 3. Georgia takes the lead 7 to 3. And boy, they got the pocket out to the right and gave Daniels an opportunity to make a throw. Yeah, just had a ball batted down. The best thing you could do is get him outside the pocket. A good call by Todd Munkin. And the ball placement, the accuracy is what Coach Smart talked about is what you like. And you love to see him come back down and be able to complete the ball and get a touchdown like that on a drive where things are moving really good for him. His first TD is a Georgia Bulldog. The young man had 152 touchdowns in high school, over 12,000 passing yards. Pickens caught that one. But think about that. He didn't even play as a senior. He could have had 200 touchdowns. <laughs> in high school. That, those are Dari Noka type of numbers. <laughs> Dari, what's going on? At minimum, gentlemen, at minimum, my numbers. All right, let's update. Auburn down 10 zip at home to Tennessee. Yeah, that was a surprise, but Anthony Schwartz being left 20 yards open, maybe more of one. 54 yards makes it 10-7. They've just tied it up with a field goal. 10-10 game on the Plains, guys. Thank you, Dari. Surely Mississippi State after that opening drive, 15 plays, 71 yards, ended in a field goal. Stopped on their previous possession as Will Rogers takes it over at the 25-yard line. Three-man rush underneath route. Pass caught there, gain of seven. Hey, tonight we'll have SEC football final, hosted by our buddy Dari Noka, our touchdown throw, along with his touchdown catchers, Gene Chiswick, Chris Doring, and Roman Harper. We'll take you through the biggest stories from the day and break down all the games. A lot to talk about today, a lot to digest. It's all coming up next right here on the SEC Network, and you can always see it on the ESPN app. Our man Chris Doring got passed tonight for 
touchdowns in the league by Devontae Smith. Going at that for a long time. Yeah, he had it long enough. This time somebody else got in there. <laughs> and off, off the left side. That one goes to Dylan Johnson. And that'll be good enough for a Mississippi State first down. Dylan at a Greenville, Mississippi. 14 rushes on the year, but 16 catches. Dequavius marked 37 rushes on the year, 38 catches coming into this one. Georgia bringing some heats. They'll go underneath again, and that pass is caught. Jaden Wally with another grab. You want to find the best matchup. And here Georgia plays man coverage, and you see him beat him across his face, and these are the things that they have to do. They got to make the tough, contested catches, especially on first down, to help their team and move this offense down the field. Wally with four catches. Complete. incomplete trying to hit Cameron Gardner you like the movement inside the pocket because he could have easily taken a sack or done something uh, probably erratic inside the pocket but now he gives his team another opportunity here on third down and keeps it at third and two and don't take that sack so you love the mobility inside the pocket from real Rogers but now you have the opportunity to run or throw if you want to This is a prime spot where they use marks a lot of the time out the backfield, lined up to the left of Rodgers. Marks will split out. Come back to the near side. That pass will be caught, and that'll be good enough for the first down. Cameron Gardner this time holds on to it. Fresh set of downs for Mississippi State. And here's what's been impressive. He's taking what the defense has given him. Georgia plays soft coverage on the outside. He's third and two. He takes the little hitch route. Now they move the chains. Very good decision making early here from Will Rogers, getting that football out of his hands and not allowing his front for Georgia to get home. How about this stat? Mississippi State had seven plays for 30 plus yards against LSU. They've only had two plays for 30 plus yards in the last five games. Will Rogers having a heck of a game. Let's go down to Lauren. Yeah, guys, you know, Will Rogers might be young, but in talking to Leach and his teammates, he's got a calmness about him. He's confident. He remains focused and more advanced than one would expect from a freshman QB playing in the SEC. And just watching him even in warm-ups when he was throwing around with his teammates, he's got this calmness and poise and confidence about him down here in the big SEC. Yeah, certainly having a good start to this one. 15 out of 19. Now, most of these are... You know, the three to seven yard route. But it's moving the chains and chewing up this clock. Roger stands in there again underneath. Boy, there's just that window shock. I mean, it's over and over again in that five to yep. ten yard area. How does Georgia stop allowing those type of passes or do you just have to live with it? Well, here's what happened. Look how deep the Georgia defenders are dropping. They're 10, 15 yards deep. And now you just check it down to a receiver on these crossing routes. They're doing a good job of finding that zone in that Georgia defense. And Will Rogers just taking it every single time, and they're moving the chain. First down and 10. We'll keep it on the ground to Dylan Johnson. And Will Rogers came in completing. 71% of his passes on the season, and that number is hanging there right now. It's 16 out of 20. <laughs> 20 attempts already. I mean, this is an offense that every ball game they've thrown for a minimum of 40 attempts a ball game has 70 versus Kentucky. So Georgia better buckle up. The ball's going to be in the air for four quarters. Welcome to Dan Lane, the defensive coordinator, saying it's such a unique defensive game plan. It's not something they do every week. But the blueprint is there, right? I mean, everybody that's had success against them the last five games have all played three-man fronts, and they drop eight. 
Yeah. <laughs> the percentage of plays you see that are pass plays is staggering. But this is what he's done. This is what he's always done at Washington State. He did it. So this is what you're going to continue to see regardless of the rush three and drop eight. He's going to continue to throw the football, forcing people to be good in zones, and they come up and tackle in space. I will say this, though. Those two teams right there, the top two teams in terms of pass percentage, mm -hmm. one of them is two and four. The other one is 0 and 8. So you're saying? Maybe run a little bit more. I <laughs> Just saying. <laughs> Come near side to Johnson. He makes a man miss, gets it inside the 25 yard line. That'll be another Mississippi State first down. And here's here's what's really good about this. They bring the corner blitz, and he understands where his height is, gets the football out, and then the receiver just turns around and blocks, and they pick up a first down. These are easy pitch and catch, but these are decisions that are made by Will Rogers pre snap and as well as post snap with Georgia doing so much movement. 23rd pass attempt is batted to the turf. It'll be second down and 10. Shock, from a defensive perspective, I gotta imagine this is a frustrating start for Georgia's defense, right? It is because they're just, just it, it's not like his big chunk plays of hernia, it's just methodically moving the football down the field. You saw that batted ball. I thought it was interesting this week. Dan Lenning said he allowed the players to be coaches this week. They had a batted ball coach. They had a zone drop coach. They had a, a, a players who, you know, can drop in coverage coach. So they kept count of how many balls they could bat all week down because they knew it would be big in this ball game. 29th play of the game for Mississippi State on offense. Georgia has run 16 plays on offense and the clock under six and a half minutes to go before halftime. And here we go again. We talked about what the backs can do out the backfield. Just slipping out here. And you see this is where Mark gets tons of his catches is because people drop in the coverage and he just checks it down. He's going to make a guy miss here or there, but if Georgia can tackle in space, it helps him. And this is really not where they want to be in third and seven. I expect Dan Landing and the Georgia defense to bring a little pressure here to try to get the ball out of hands. Of Will Rogers. 18, 19 completions to nine different receivers for Will Rogers. That's Peyton in motion across the formation. Three man rush again. Rogers rolls to his right, looking and looking, and then slings it. Is it caught? They're going to say incomplete. It was caught, but out of bounds. Well, that was close over there. Olante oh, Peyton catch. made a nice grab, but did he stay in bounds? Yeah, this is a precision throw here. He puts it on the outside. His receiver is just breaking away, trying to get open for him. But let's just see if he gets a foot or two down. Looks like he may have got a shin down. The ruling of a that may be catch, catch is under video review. Yeah, I think he got that shin down as he's falling to the ground to catch that football. He may have got that shin down on the sideline. We'll take a closer look at it. And while they do that, we'll step aside. Mississippi State driving. Well, Javante Payton making a nice grab. One official said incomplete. The other one came in and said complete. They went to replay, and this will stand as a reception. A nice job there by Payton. And that's good enough for the first down. It sets up Mississippi State now. First and goal with 5.41 to go before halftime. Hey, tomorrow we'll have the Women's Soccer Tournament Championship match for you right here on the SEC Network and the ESPN app. And seventh seed at Vanderbilt squares off against number one seed Arkansas. It's coming your way at 2 o'clock Eastern. Of course, you can always catch that on the app as well. So first down and goal from just inside the five-yard line for Mississippi State, trying to take the lead on the 13th-ranked Georgia Bulldogs. Keep it on the ground, left side. Touchdown, Dylan Johnson. Charles Cross, a left tackle, tackle paving the way for the Mississippi State touchdown. Look at the big splits up front, the big splits, and they just wall off that entire left side. Give that left side of the offensive line a lot of credit. Charles Cross, Elliott up front, and look at the splits here. Then you see you just collapse that left side, and then Dylan with one yard to go. That's when he first gets touched. A tough physical run to get Mississippi State, and what a drive there for Mississippi State to go down and respond after Georgia scores. 
Mississippi State's offensive line. Big question, would they be able to hold up against Georgia's front? And they have done so quite effectively here in the first half. And Mississippi State up by three. That'll give you a chance to flex a little bit on the road. Dylan Johnson with the touchdown. Hey, this season, for every field goal and extra point made by participating universities, Allstate will make a contribution to the university's general scholarship fund. Thank you, Allstate. Mississippi State, two scoring drives, one touchdown, one field goal. But those two drives, if you combine them, they've lasted 29 plays. They've gone 146 yards, and it's chewed up over 15 minutes off the clock on those two possessions. As this kick will sail into the end zone, give us an opportunity to step aside for a quick message from our good friends at Academy Sports and Outdoors. So I know you're probably trying to figure out where to get your Christmas gifts, and I have the answer for you right here at Academy Sports and Outdoors. They have everything that you might need, including trampolines. Let's just not wait to wrap up the trampoline, put it under the tree. Just go ahead and get it right now so you can have fun all season long, right? Right you are. We're having fun inside Sanford Stadium tonight. A crowd of a little over 20,000 could attend. About 25% capacity here at Sanford Stadium at Dooley Field. Dave Neal, DJ Shockley, and Lauren Sisler down on the sidelines as Mississippi State leading Georgia 10 to 7. And a free play here for Georgia. JT Daniels, will he step up and let one fly? He will. Deep down the middle, has a man. His pass is caught at the 26 yard line. A great catch by Burke in traffic. And Georgia on the move in a hurry. This is the vertical pass the game you get Decides. with JT Decides. Daniels. Daniels decline. Result of play. First down. But watch him go up and get this football. Jermaine Burton goes up and attacks this football and comes down with a big catch. And you make him pay for jumping off sides where it could have been just a five-yard penalty. You take the shot, you have the awareness to do it, and Burton makes him pay. Boy, if JT Daniels would have got that a little further down the field, that could have been six for Burton, but they'll take it at the 26-yard line, first down and 10. And he gives the football to James Cook, trying to get the left edge, can't do it. You know, one of the things that Kirby Smart was talking to us about uh, yesterday and, and JT Daniels, you know, even though he didn't give us the, the true heads up, you could read between the lines that this was going to be JT's game. But he said the one thing that when JT does get in there, he didn't want him to press, didn't want him to feel like he had to show everybody everything he has in the first series. And I think he's done a nice job of playing a calm, cool, collective game to this point. Yeah, and that's tough to do, especially when you haven't played in a while and the expectations are high. Everybody wants to see you play, so he's done a good job to control those emotions. Four-man rush, and JT in trouble and dropped again for the second time tonight. Mississippi State able to get to JT Daniels. First man there was Jaden Crumity, the big nose tackle. And watch the activity up front. They come with this stunt here, comes inside. Now the pressure comes from the inside. It does a good job of moving. Cleveland does a good job of pushing him away, but the continued pressure and effort up front from Mississippi State finally gets to JT Daniels. And this is something that this Mississippi State front has done continuously is be active and really get up field and pressure the quarterback. Crumity got credit for the sack, but Aaron Brule was really the man who kind of forced that pocket to collapse. Now they'll set up a little screen to Burton. They'll get it back across the original line of scrimmage to around the 24-yard line, so it'll be third down and about eight coming up now for Georgia. Yeah, run a tunnel screen to try to help the field goal kicker here to get pick up a couple more yards, third and 17. Mississippi State actually did their own of rush three and drop eight in that particular play and just wanted to rally to the football, but it makes it a little bit easier field goal here for Georgia. It's fourth down coming up, and here's an opportunity for Jack Pelesny to add to his totals. Eight out of ten on the year. And this one from 42 yards, and it is dead, solid, perfect. Georgia has evened this one up. 3-10 to go before halftime. Tied at 10 at Sanford Stadium. Regions halftime report coming up momentarily. Dari Doring Chiswick, Devontae Smith's record setting day will show you that. Also, a close game at the half in 
Auburn, first half, 10-10. We didn't see this coming. We didn't see that coming, but it was nice to see George Pickens back involved in the offense. George has rushed for one yard, and it's tied. <laughs> and I think the stat right there that just kind of shocks me as well, George has rushed for one yard tonight. Now, of course, that factors in some sacks, but regardless, that is a kind of a staggering number here in the first half with three minutes and 10 seconds to play before intermission. So if Georgia going to try to get a little momentum after that field goal that tied it up. And Mississippi State has been able to work the clock here in the first half to their advantage. Yeah, they pushed the ball down the field when they needed to. And give Will Rogers a lot of credit. He made some plays inside and outside the pocket to give him a chance. But the decision making is what really made him so special. You see the numbers at the bottom, the time of possession is what really controlled this ball game. Mississippi State has had 31 plays. They've racked up 154 yards of offense. Georgia's had it for 16, or excuse me, 20 plays for 121 yards. Georgia sending three again, dropping eight and underneath that pass caught. Pickup of five yards by Witherspoon. Yeah, Witherspoon's running the angle right off the backfield. But this is the spot here with less than three minutes to go. All their drives have taken a number of amount of minutes off the clock. And they played clean so far. He has to do such a good job of making sure he takes care of the football here. Not try to push the ball down the field knowing that, hey, we only have two minutes and 40 seconds to get to half. Second down and five. Georgia bringing four this time. Pass caught around the 45-yard line. That's another Mississippi State first down. Pass caught there by Jaden Wally, who's having a heck of a first half. His first trip into Sanford Stadium. Five catches now. And this is where this offense has grown. Early in the season, they had struggles trying to find the zone, trying to run fast, and make sure they're on the same timing with the quarterback. It seems like this offense is clicking now when they've seen so much of this drop eight coverage. After the 14-yard pickup, they'll go back to the air and they'll pick up four or five there as that pass is caught by Austin Williams. Often they call him Mr. Reliable, the junior out of Ocean Springs, Mississippi, making the catch there, his 25th catch of the year. Yeah, I've been super consistent all year long. Last year only had 11 total receptions, already up to 25 catches this season. So you see his value in production has definitely grown. There goes Williams in motion across the formation. Rodgers lofts it up. Nice touch pass. Caught there. That is Wally down the sidelines. Give him six. Touchdown, Mississippi State. 49 yards. And we just talked about Georgia playing so much drop eight, eight coverage. Well, they finally go man coverage, and this is where Mississippi State wants to find the defense. And Wally does a good job of beating to the outside. Look at that throw. The throw is perfectly thrown to Wally, and he beats Mark Webb down that right side, and all down that sideline is Wally using his speed. And you see the excitement from Rodgers. Big-time throw, big-time catch, puts his team back up. That'll actually go as a 51-yard touchdown reception. Rodgers to Jaden Wally. His numbers are skyrocketing here in the first half. Six catches for 104 yards. And Mississippi State, which came in here with less than 50 scholarship players, is up by a touchdown. My goodness. Came in here with a really good game plan. They've taken what's given to them underneath, and then when they've caught Georgia in man coverage, that's when they've really hurt them down the field. And Wally did a good job of on that leverage, beating the leverage, and then getting on the outside here. And look at the time he has. He has all day to throw the football and just lays it to him perfectly. And really good job of lining that DB up. And then Wally just making a big catch and then finishing it for a touchdown. This drive only lasted a minute 42, but they'll take it, right? Seven on Absolutely. the board. It went four, four plays and 75 yards. And Will Rogers, how about these numbers, Shock? Right, true freshman, playing high school football last year. 24 of 29 for 210 and a touchdown. And Dave, what does this do for you? Builds confidence. You're building confidence on the road in an environment like this. You haven't been here before. 
You've heard so much about this Georgia defense, and you've only gone out here and thrown for 210 yards in the first half and haven't turned it over, made some big-time throws. He's growing up right in front of everybody's eyes for Mississippi State. This kick taken at the goal line. Kiaris Jackson out to the 30-yard line. Well, here's what Georgia's offense has done. A little over 10 minutes with the football, 20 plays, 121 yards. Dave, I think the number one thing is what you just talked about. Georgia has one rushing yard in this ball game. And we mentioned, yes, yeah, sacks are part of it, but you have one rushing yard. Georgia has built their offense around being physical up front and running the football downhill, but you have one rushing yard in this ball game. That's not going to help you, especially if you want to be a play action, throw the football down the field type of offense. You have to have the threat of running the football. Mississippi State has done such a good job so far of stopping it. Mississippi State going with a very young group of players. Rodgers, Marks, Johnson, and of course, Jaden Wally on offense and its work. Let's go down to Lauren. Yeah, you know, Todd Munkin said, simply put, this team has been inconsistent on offense. Going back to camp, he said, we looked the part, scrimmaged well, felt like we could score on anybody, and they've proven that at times, but there has been a high level of inconsistencies and mistakes that haven't allowed them to finish the job. Well, you know, Kirby Smart said they have to have better timing, more precision in the pass game, which will allow them to, to run the ball a little bit better. And, and you know, those things two, those two things work hand in hand. And uh, they've had a few flashes of that, but for the most part, it hasn't been an offense that, that I would say has been in sync in JT Daniels' first start. Although this is a good way to get this drive started as Kiaris Jackson gets it out over the 45-yard line. Uh, Shock, what do you make of this? Uh, I, you look at the numbers and it gets to the bottom. Plays per game. It's kind of similar to what we've seen today. You haven't been able to convert on third down, so ultimately you are not on the field enough to have these big plays, to have yards. So uh, they got to do better on first and second down. And here you have a big play, and now it's coming back because of a flag. Georgia has hurt themselves numerous amounts of times throughout these last ball games, and it's been self-inflicted wounds. So now Georgia back to the 20-yard line. Boy, you have a big play like that, and a holding call pushes you back 10 yards. First down and 20, 16 on the clock. Georgia with three timeouts left. JT Daniel steps up in that pocket, hit as he throws, going deep, looking for Burton, has it! Out of bounds around the 35-yard line. Jermaine Burton with his second big-time catch here in the first half. It's unreal he's able to get this football in there because Mississippi State is playing some form of cover three, and Burton still gets behind the defense. But did you see the location of that football? Perfectly dropped in the bucket, and we've seen it so far already. JT Daniels' ability to push the football vertically down the field gives him a different threat on offense. 46-yard reception. That one's batted down and incomplete. Well, we saw that quite a bit with Stetson Bennett when he was running the show at quarterback, and now we see it with JT Daniels. They list JT at 6'3". I don't know if he's quite 6'3". Stetson Bennett, they list him at 5'10". Not so sure he's 5'10", 5'11", either. Pretty good half, pretty good start for his... Uh, first appearance in a Georgia Bulldog uniform. 10 of 13, 166 yards and a touchdown. Yeah, he's really only had one errant throw back on that first drive where it was nearly picked off. But other than that, he's been made really good decisions. He's thrown the football down the field and he's given Georgia a chance to move his chains. Pass caught around the 20 yard line. That'll be good enough for a Bulldog first down. George Pickett says, let's go. I'm ready. You can, see, you can see the arm strength on that one. He couldn't even step into that football, but he does a good job of getting it out, kind of sidearms it, and throws it into the cover two window where Pickens can come down with it. And back off the right side. There goes James Cook. He's down to the 15-yard line. 
London Kraft with his fifth tackle out of his safety spot. Georgia will take a timeout here with 45 seconds to go before halftime. This is where you talk to JT Daniels and say, hey, we got 45 seconds. We have points on the board here, possibly with a field goal. Let's not do anything to put ourselves in danger here. We're throwing the football pretty well. Let's not try to force the issue here. Let's make sure we take care of the football. You know, and this is where, this is the first time we've seen this tonight, and that is the depth. There's not a lot of numbers defensively for Mississippi State. They don't have much in the secondary. They certainly don't have much in the linebacking core. And, boy, if you can get these guys in a situation where they're playing a bunch of plays, it could really pay off in the fourth quarter if you're Georgia. Yeah, you see Kobe Jones there, one of the leaders on defense, number 52, was literally on a knee doing that break, trying to get some air, trying to get some wind. And this is a, a chance where their defense – uh, of coordinator Zach Arnett is saying, hey, we just need you to stop him. We don't allow him to get into the end zone. Keep everything in front of you. Quick hitter to Burton. Cuts it to the outside, to the 10, to the 5, and he is thrown out of bounds there. But there is a flag back where there might be an illegal block coming up against Georgia. Yeah, it looks like they're going to get Trey McKitty on the outside. I wonder if it's a hold on the outside by Trey McKitty, the tight end, who was actually blocking for Burton on that little screen pass. Holding. Offense. 87. 10-yard penalty from the spot of the foul. Repeat second down. You see 87. Trey McKitty come out. He's blocking the corner here, and as Burton goes to the outside, I don't know about that one. Yeah, I don't know about that one either. Usually you see a tug of a jersey. You see a guy trying to pull away. Didn't see much there. So that'll push the football back to the 18-yard line. 38 seconds on the clock. in the air and incomplete. Count is three batted balls already in this first half. And the ball's trying to come out quick. They bring the pressure off the edge by Aaron Brule, and he just knocks it down. Hey, we've seen that a couple times here in the ball game. If you can't get to the quarterback, get your hands up. And that was just a well-designed blitz and good job of knocking that football down. Well, he's been something in the past game. He has 20 total quarterback hurries leads all SEC linebackers with that number and he's been in the backfield quite a bit tonight. JT Daniels has a clean pocket throws to the end zone touchdown Jermaine Burton 18 yards on the reception for the true freshman. That's the California connection right there. JT Daniels out of Irvine to Jermaine Burton out of Calabasas. One guy you can't you can't lose track of is Burton because he's had a big ball game. But watch the flick of the wrist. Watch how the quick release of this football comes out, puts it high, and Burton just running right down the seam, and nobody catches him coming down the middle of that field. Nice job there by Burton. Four-star receiver. Top 13 wide receiver in the country, rated by our recruiting experts at ESPN. Top 100 recruit. And coaches, you mentioned it earlier, we're talking about his skill set and how talented he is, and it's only a matter of time. Well, that time may be right now. Yeah, how about that drive? We talked about Mississippi State going down and respond. Georgia comes right back down with the half barreling down on him. JT Daniels makes a couple big plays. Bird makes a big couple big plays on that drive and you're in the end zone just like that. He's having a day any day. Seven for 149 and a touchdown in the first half, averaging 21 yards a catch. How, how, about, our, how, how about each school with their, their best receivers tonight are, are true freshmen. You know, Jaden Wally with career-high six catches, career-high 104 yards and a touchdown. 
Then Jermaine Burton on the other side, as you mentioned, seven for 149. He has a touchdown. Both quarterbacks have thrown for over 200 yards. The college game has changed right before our <laughs> eyes. Has it not this year? I mean, it is all about the offense. And that'll sail to the back of the end zone with 30 seconds to play before halftime. So if you're Mississippi State, you got to feel pretty good about things. Now, Georgia will get the football to start the second half, but, I mean, Mississippi State, who knew what to expect? Really, I don't think anybody knew what to expect coming in here with such a limited roster. There were even rumors this week that they might not even get the game in, but obviously uh, here they are, and they're tied at the half. Yeah, credit Mike Leach for having his team ready to go on the road, in an environment, at night. I mean, there's so many things that were working against this Mississippi State team to even be here tonight. The way they played the last couple weeks, but to be going into halftime, tied 17 all on the road, he has to be extremely excited how his teams came out and played. And the Pirate working his magic tonight. It's been a long time since he's been here in Athens. Last time he visited was with Kentucky as an assistant coach with Hal Mummy back in the mid-90s. Big collision right at the 35 as the youngster Marks gets the carry and I think Mississippi State will be just happy getting this one to the end zone. I mean to the uh, locker room here at halftime or the end zone. Either way, we probably would like that too, right? <laughs> Run it again off the left side with Marks, and that will do it. So after 30 minutes of football, it's right where we started, tied up. 13th-ranked Georgia. It's been a long time since they've been home, six weeks since their last home game, getting tested by Mississippi State. We are tied at 17. Quarterbacks have put on a pretty good show tonight. And with that, we'll get to the studio. Dari and the boys will take it from here. Quite entertaining first 30 minutes. Dari? And welcome back to SEC Saturday Night Football presented by Auto Owners Insurance. The Battle of the Bulldogs. Last time Mississippi State was here was 2017. This guy was in high school, JT Daniels. So your thoughts on his first half performance? I thought he was efficient. I thought he did some really good things throwing the football. And I thought this was what made him special coming in, was throwing the football vertically down the field. And he just had such a quick release throw on the football. And on the other side of the ball, Will Rogers has played an efficient game as well. And you're talking about just being a guy who made great decisions. This was an outstanding throw, getting outside the pocket. He's taking what the defense has given him with some of these underneath throws. And then you talk about the ball placement. Look where he lies this football with Georgia plays man coverage. Not many times, but while he makes them pay, both quarterbacks have came in and played really good tonight. And you can see if they can continue to do that in the second half. As we take a look at our Zaxby's first half stats, uh, you see Mississippi State with 241 yards. That number is significant because their total offense per game, their four prior games, was just 229 for the entire game. They put up 241 in the first half. Yeah, it's been impressive. They have definitely controlled the clock as we see there, but it's just been the decision making of the quarterback, checking it down, making the right decisions. Georgia will get the football first. And that'll get it out to the 25-yard line. It gives us a chance to go to the sidelines and visit with Lauren Sisler. Yeah, Dave, talking to Mike Leach coming out of the locker room. Look, we know he's a man of few words, but he said he was overall pleased with the way the offense and defense executed. He said they gave up some big plays there late, but he was very pleased with the way they executed. And most importantly, he loves their energy right now. That is a big key factor for him. He wants to see them play excited. And I'm telling you, they're late. In the second quarter, I was really seeing a lot of energy from that Mississippi State football team. Thanks, Lord. 17-17, Bulldogs with the opening possession here in the second half. JT Daniels with a good first half, first play. And this will be a toss sweep going nowhere. This is the one thing I think the takeaway for me in the first half, more so than JT Daniels' performance, is the fact that Georgia ran for just seven yards, Shock. Yeah, their inability to run the football has been one of the things that you look at and say, wow, where is the run game from Georgia? But they made up for it in the pass game with JT Daniels in the vertical threat. So if they want to be more balanced, which they want to be, they have to find this run game in the second half. 
lost a yard on that one. So Georgia came in averaging 174 yards a game on the ground. That was fifth in the conference. Here's Cook, his opportunity with the football in his hands, and he gets it to the 23-yard line before he's pushed out of bounds. Now you're looking at third down. Yeah, it's third and long. The last place you want it to be, but Georgia hasn't struggled throwing the football down the field. They find ways to be creative. And the one guy who's hurt Mississippi State on the tonight in this ball game has been Jermaine Burton. And right now, he's not on the field, but he's been the guy that's hurt him, especially on third down, making some key catches. Third down at 12. Three-man rush by Mississippi State. Pass is caught. First down, Georgia. George Pickens. He'll pick up 15. Yeah, he's just going to go down. He's going to hook up in this zone right here. And just an outstanding job of staying in that space. And JT Daniels finding him. But you see the wingspan of him to come down with that football. Daniels low throw. Scooped off the turf by Kiaris Jackson. And he'll get out of bounds. Georgia came in averaging just 209 yards passing through the air. But tonight, JT Daniels has put together a pretty solid performance, 220 yards through the air. You, know, you can see him moving people around. That's one thing Coach Smart said was, hey, he has complete command of this offense, has a great presence, and understands where each guy in this offense belongs. There goes Zamir White off the left side. Got back to the line of scrimmage. Now it's third down and six. Mississippi State, Martin Emerson comes up off that from his corner spot and makes that play. And Georgia continues trying to stick with the run, but it just has not been there for them today. They try to get to the perimeter. They've tried to use some bubble screens. And you see Emerson there, who's one of their top corners on this football team, comes up and makes a really good tackle in space. Georgia will go empty set here on third down and six from the 41. Now they bring McIntosh in the backfield to the left with JT Daniels. Four-man rush by Mississippi State. Daniels gets the pass off. Harris Jackson spins off a couple of Mississippi State defenders to the 49-yard line, and that'll be good enough for the first down. Love the pocket movement as well, but look at the soft coverage here from Mississippi State. Allow them to just sit down in his zone, similar to what Mississippi State has done on offense, and then give it to your playmaker in space and allow him to just to pick up that first down. Dumps it off. Well played there by Mississippi State as Jackson makes the catch. Tackle made by Martin Emerson, who now has five tackles this afternoon. Pretty methodical drive in the start, and it's been all through the air. Some we haven't seen for a long time. When you watch this Georgia football team, is they're led in the pass game, but right now in this ball game, Mississippi State has came in and said, "Hey, we're going to take away the run and force you to throw the football and be patient." Daniels, 18 of 22, a couple of touchdowns. Mississippi State with a corner blitz. Georgia picks it up nicely, allowing Daniels to heave one down the field. There's Burton. Touchdown, Georgia. 48 yards. Jermaine Burton having a night. Look on the outside. Watch the blitz pick up on the outside by Kenny McIntosh. They bring the corner blitz. He picks it up, which gives Daniels the time. And watch him lay it out there. And it's just nothing but a simple go route on the outside. Just run by him, stop and go. Stops his feet just a little bit. And then you see him get back on top in a well-thrown football from JT Daniels, who continues to impress in his first start tonight. Point after up a good Georgia. Took advantage of getting the football to start the third quarter. Results in a touch with 10 catches for 130 yards. But tonight, Mr. Burton has put together 197 yards on eight catches, including the touchdown that capped that scoring drive of eight plays and 75 yards, just a tick under four minutes off the clock. Georgia out in front, 24 to 17. Boy, this guy is 
had some kind of night. Yeah, he's got 197 yards. The school record, if people are wondering, is 205 by Tavares King in 2012 with Michigan State. So he is closely approaching that in this ballgame. Out the end zone, out to the 25-yard line. Hey, our next SEC storied film is titled No Experience Required. Sounds like something I'd be up for. Premieres Tuesday at 9 Eastern. It's the story of Texas A&M's fame, 12th man tradition, and Jackie Sherrill's idea to have his 1983 kickoff coverage team be made up of non-scholarship walk-ons. Maybe that isn't for me in a lot of ways. <laughs> Had a chance to see Coach can't Sherrill take it back last now, year. You can't take it back. I know. Let's not go down that road, right? I'm committed. I'm all in. <laughs> <laughs> That'll be Tuesday, 9 Eastern, but uh, I had a chance to see Coach Sherrill last year. Matter of fact, we did a Mississippi State-Texas A&M game over in College Station, and, and uh, Coach, Eaton, of course, coached both those clubs, and uh, great to visit with him again. Just a wonderful man. Loves football. There is Austin Williams with the catch on a first down and 10. And I guess the story here now, right, Shock, is Mississippi State can't do a three and out with their defense on the field the last possession. You could see guys getting a little tired. Absolutely, and they came out and did exactly what they needed to do on first down, which was pick up some positive yards. You pick up eight yards on first down, and it goes back to how they started the ball game. Quick, intermediate, ball out of the hands, good decisions from the quarterback. Second down and ten, or two, for Will Rogers and company. Pocket holds up well, pass caught underneath. That'll be good enough for the first down as he picks up five and a half, maybe six yards as Osiris Mitchell makes that catch. Cyrus, 6'5", 210. That is a big boy. Yeah, that's a big time receiver there. And as a quarterback, you love throwing the guys that size because you know you can put it anywhere and the catch rate is and usually they're going to come down with the football. A school record, 183 yards receiving versus LSU. Six 100-yard games in his career. First down and 10. They'll run it here with Dylan Johnson, and he's to the 43-yard line, brought down by Devontae Wyatt. This offense under Will Rogers moving at a pretty good clip compared to what they were doing the four prior games. A lot of it just comes from being able to move the chains. I mean, They've been a lot of third and longs the last couple of ball games because of what they've done on first and second down. You see it here again on first down, they pick up five yards. This is staying ahead of the chain for Mississippi State. Georgia looks like they're going to bring some heat here on second and five. They'll bring an extra rusher. And pass is caught at the Georgia 45 by Osiris Mitchell again. Georgia brings the pressure, but watch this Mississippi State offensive line pick it up. Will Rogers moves a little bit to his right, buys himself a little time. And you see him just sit right in that little zone, that voided area as Cyrus Mitchell and comes out with the catch. And again, they move the chains. And when we talked to Dan Lanning this week, he said, hey, we have some calls in this ball game that we haven't done even in camp. They said, getting ready for the Mississippi State team is like getting ready for a triple option. Georgia brings some pressure. Mississippi State goes with a wide receiver screen and they get it to Osiris Mitchell. Brought down by Jalen Carter. And they're not sitting back anymore. They're coming after him. Perfect call by Mike Lynch coming with the blitz and you run the screen underneath. And here we go again. Another big gain on first down that gives you an opportunity to stay ahead of the chains. I can't emphasize it enough of how important it is for this offense to continue doing that. Yeah, they'll line up and Three-man front, now a fourth, approaches that line of scrimmage. They'll back off, three-man coming for Georgia. They'll dump it off underneath to Dylan Johnson, and Dylan dives for the line to gain. And Mississippi State keeps on trucking for more on this offense and how tough it is to defend. Let's go down to Lawrence. Yes, yeah, Shock, you talked about landing and what they had to overcome in terms of preparing for this. Uh, offense of Mississippi State. None of these base calls are installed in fall camp. So you're literally starting from ground zero into a week like this. So it's critical to play fundamentally sound football against this offense and to keep guys around the ball at all times. You know, tackling always matters, but especially in this matchup. 
No doubt Georgia's missed a couple of tackles on these short underneath routes. Now they bring some pressure, and Mississippi State hits him. Austin Williams with a catch. They're inside the 20-yard line. Another first down for Mississippi State. Right, for the second time, Georgia comes with a blitz from the opposite side, and Will Rogers does a good job of going to where they come from and replacing and hitting them down the seam. Nice job there from Will Rogers, understanding where the void in that zone is and hitting them with an accurate throw. What an impressive drive so far for Mississippi State, trying to respond to Georgia after their scoring drive. Eighth play of the drive coming up. It's amassed 58 yards to this point. And Will Rogers, 30 of 35 for 263. <laughs> Go on the ground. Dylan Johnson wrapped up, maybe lost a yard. Look like that last look at pass. This, yeah, this last completion here. Look at the blitz come from the right side. Look at the void from the back side. And he understands exactly where the, the hole is in that zone. And he makes a quick decision, and the ball is out of his hand. Doesn't give time for that blitz to even get home because he's letting it go so fast. George has put some pressure on him, and Mississippi State's hit it, right? I mean, they've protected well, and they've had the right Absolutely. play call, and then Georgia lays back. And rushes three, and they hit these under net, un underneath routes. Has to be frustrating. Now they're coming with some more pressure. Rodgers, wide open, pass dropped by Wally, who had such a great first half, career numbers, and that one could have been a big play for Mississippi State. Oh, he probably walks into the end zone. They catch Georgia in man coverage again. Oh. And look how far away Webb is, and he takes his eyes off it right at the last moment because he understands there's nobody around me. And he knows he walks in for another touchdown. But those are the plays you have to hit. Now you're third and 11, forcing yourself into a situation you do not want to be in versus defense. Well, when you're the underdog on the road, limited numbers on your roster, those are the plays you've got to have. See if they can make up for it here on third and 11. Back shoulder throw, pass is caught Osiris Mitchell. First down and goal for Mississippi State. Dave, I cannot talk about how money this throw is. The placement of it, watch where he puts this football on the back shoulder, forces the receiver to turn back. There's nothing Eric Stokes can do about that because of where that ball was placed and thrown by Will Rogers. First and goal for the three. Handed off to Johnson. He's driving toward the goal line. The pile moving. Does it cross? Yes, it does. Touchdown, Mississippi State. If you don't believe Mississippi State believes they can win this ball game, look at the effort on this particular play here. The play should be stopped on about the two-yard line, but watch the offensive lineman come in here and push him into the end zone here. The effort. The attitude that Mississippi State is bringing into this ball game, responding, going blow for blow with Georgia, is fun to watch. Brandon Reeves to attempt the point after. I don't think there's a whole lot of people around the country, except maybe the folks wearing the white jerseys tonight that thought this would be the story in the third quarter. Tied at 24. Well, JT Daniels has done this before to Mike Leach. This was 2018, early in his freshman year at USC, Washington State and USC. And JT Daniels would lead USC to a victory, a slim margin of 39 to 36 as JT threw for 241 yards and three touchdown passes. And tonight, JT Daniels trying to do the same thing to Coach Leach, just in a different venue, in a different jersey, on a different day. I think he settled into this ball game. A little anti early, but I think he settled in. It feels pretty comfortable as well as Willard Rogers does as well on the other side. Yeah, our quarterbacks have put together quite the story tonight. Will Rogers, 
again, I keep saying this, was playing high school football in Brandon, Mississippi a year ago. It's 31 of 37 for 278. JT Daniels hasn't played football in over a year, and he is 19 of 23 for 280 and three touchdown passes. This is my kind of ball game, Dave. Two QBs throwing it all over the yard, making plays. I'm excited watching these two young QBs go at it. Well, Zach Garnett, the defensive coordinator for Mississippi State, Dan Lanning, the D.C. for Georgia. They're about the only two guys that don't like this right now, right? <laughs> no doubt. 5-17 to go in the third quarter. Pickens in motion. Little flea flicker. Back to JT. He'll go underneath the Pickens as Mississippi State, obviously, a drop back. And Georgia will pick up. Looks like they'll pick up about four and a half on that. Well, see, you pick up four yards, but this tells you that JT Daniels is dialed in. Just because you call a shot play doesn't mean you have to throw it. It's not there like you mentioned, Dave. Mississippi State played it pretty well, didn't allow the deep throw. He checks it down and gets positive yards out of it. Second down and a long three. Uh, long seven, I should say. And... Handoff goes nowhere. It'll be third down. Coming up for the Bulldogs. Don't forget Marty Smith and Ryan McGee. They'll have some fun and talk everything that is the SEC Wednesday at a special time. That's 2 o'clock Eastern on Thanksgiving week right here on the SEC Network. And, of course, you can see the boys on the ESPN app as well. That'll be Wednesday, 2 o'clock Eastern time. I'm sure they're dialed into this one. As, uh, yeah, fellas, this score comes... Good. Yeah, when this one comes across the, 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 you know, the score on the bottom, whatever game you're watching, this is one of those where you start clicking over, right? Oh, yeah. It's definitely intriguing. Four-man rush by Mississippi State. Underneath throw will be good enough for a first down. Pass is caught there by the tight end. Another, another quick, easy decision. Catch. Another quick, easy decision here. Knows where he wants to go with the football. Puts it on that left shoulder. So he can turn away from the defender. Really nice ball, really nice decision as well. Nothing happening there in the run game. With Zamir White. Zamir White on the NFL coaching veteran and has seen a lot of football but one thing he said about JT Daniels is his pure love for the game and as a coach you absolutely love guys like that he mentioned Jameis Winston who he coached at Tampa Bay having an innate love for the game and there really is a rare percentage of players that love the game that much and JT is definitely one of those guy comes out of a great high school at modern day they produce some awesome quarterbacks Matt Liner Colt Brennan Matt Barkley there's a guy at Alabama right now looking pretty good, too, that was there right after JT, Bryce Young. We've got some work today for the Crimson Tide. It's a lineage of quarterback right there from that school. Goodness gracious, they put him out. It'll be third down and 11 now for Georgia. And Lauren just talked about how he loves the game. This guy who... He knew for weeks probably wasn't going to play in a bunch of ball games, but Coach Munkin said he was the first guy to turn in all his tests. He was always ready. He was always prepared. He watched film like he was going to be the starter. So he's been waiting for this moment for a long time, and let me see if he can come up with something big here on third and long. Oh, Mississippi State selling out of the blitz. J.T. Daniels has a chance to air it out. It just overthrows Pickens at the 20, looking around for a flag. I don't see one. He doesn't see one, and I don't think we're going to get one. Yeah, it looks like both guys are just, you see a lot of hand fight between both the guys. I, I love the no call there. Both guys are grabbing each other. You see both of them with two hands grabbing on each other, so I love the no call there. Let the guys play a little bit. Good coverage by the freshman Emmanuel Forbes. Georgia will have to punt it away. Nate Carmada, third in the FBS, averaging 48 yards per punt. This one, not one of his best efforts as it takes a good Mississippi State bounce. He'll have some good field position when we come back. Tied at 24 late in the third quarter. 
Right now, the FBI predicts the Crimson Tide to run away with the SEC championship. Florida hanging in there with a 6-1 and one record. A little over 20%. And Georgia. So you're saying we have a chance. And they had a chance for the interception and could not hold on to it. That will leave a mark. Yeah, he reads it right away. Lewis seen sitting right in the middle of your field, playing a little robber coverage oh, and steps right man. in front of it. I'm not sure how he dropped it. Probably could have been the easiest interception he ever had in his career. And the one mistake that could have been detrimental for Mississippi State actually turns into an okay situation because he drops it. Lewis Sane, of course, didn't get to play the first half of this one. Rejected for targeting. Last game against Florida, and now Bulldogs will come back, complete the pass for a gain of about four. That one goes to Jaquavius Marks. For the majority of this ball game, when Mississippi State has been in third down, it's been third and five or less. A little bit longer third down here. They had a third and 11 they completed on the last drive, but they're seven for nine in this ball game on third down. Looks to be in some type of man coverage here. Mississippi State wants a timeout. Playcock was winding down to zero, and the Time Pirate out. gets the timeout. Mississippi State. On a big third down at six. Don't want to botch this one, that's for sure. Yeah, and the things that have hurt Georgia. On, especially on third down, when they play man coverage or crossing routes, they've had crossing routes and corners. Just outbreaking routes have been really tough for Georgia to cover in this ball game when they decide to go man coverage. See if Mississippi State goes back to one of those style of plays and try to create some separation to get a first down. 17 first downs for Mississippi State tonight on third downs. This is a number to me that's somewhat shocking. It's seven out of nine, but. When you go back and kind of think about it, they've been really good on first downs, right? So they've left mm -hmm. themselves second and four, five, giving them those short yardage third down conversion opportunities. But this is a team that wasn't very good on third downs coming in, just at 32%. That was 107th in the country. It's only 126 teams playing ball right now. Too. It tells you the struggles they've had, but it's been pretty good today. Georgia in their usual four-man look on this third down. There's a flag that'll stop the play. Looks like the right guard Parker might have popped up. Let's see what the Prime end result snap. is. Ball start. Offense number 58. Five-yard penalty. Third down. 58, not 56. So one minute, 39 seconds. Cameron Jones backs him up five. One other nugget we haven't really talked about, but K.J. Costello, who was the starter at the beginning of the season, uh, not with the team, got banged up in the Alabama game uh, a few games ago, a few weeks ago, and didn't make the trip. So it is Will Rogers and then the walk-on, Justin Stolberg, is your backup quarterback tonight for Mississippi State. Rodgers flushed out of the pocket, and it'll be incomplete. Georgia finally gets home with that rush. They rush four, bring a little stunt from one side, and try to loop back around with forces. Will Rogers outside the pocket a little bit, and now you're going to run into that right side where not many routes are on that side and force him to throw that football away. Really good job for that front of Georgia to get home on that long third down situation. Kiaris Jackson back to return this punt off the foot of Reed Bowman. Good clean snap. Fair catch call for it at the 20. And I think Jackson probably would like to return that one if he could. But Georgia will have the football. 125 to go here in the third quarter. And there is a flag 
on the play. So we will wait one moment. Well, the SEC college basketball season tips off Wednesday, and we'll have a doubleheader for you. John Calipari and the 10th-ranked Wildcats will host Moorhead State from Rupp Arena, 6 o'clock Eastern. Then we'll turn our attention to Knoxville, where Rick Barnes and his 12th-ranked Volunteers will host Charlotte. Both games right here on the SEC Network and the ESPN app. That's coming your way Wednesday. It's taken a while, but Hoops is finally here. Push the season back a few weeks. Mississippi State will decline that penalty. Kirby Smart, none too pleased with the results of that. Georgia's defense was able to come up with a big stop in their last drive. Mississippi State was pretty much in command offensively going up and down the field. See if Mississippi State can return the favor here as Georgia and JT Daniels have been really good throwing the football down the field. Zamir White, and he'll get it back to the line of scrimmage. Georgia's run game. Jaden Crumity gets to stop there, but I mean, still, I mean, look, look six yards rushing. Six. Yeah, it's, it's, it's non existent, and that is squarely on the offensive line for Georgia. Give Mississippi State front seven a lot of credit. They haven't been moved around. This Georgia offensive line has not moved anybody, and there's been too much penetration. So Mississippi State has absolutely won it in the run game. And look, this old line, I think, has been a lot better than people expected them to be this year. But tonight, they have met their match with the front of Mississippi State, who does it again. Might have lost a yard. It'll be third down. Watch the penetration here. Look, it, they, they got a gap in a, a guy in each gap, nowhere for Jay, for McIntosh to go. And if you're a Georgia fan, you're probably asking why you continue to run the football. Why the, why keep pounding your head against that wall when the, the pass game has been so good for you? Mississippi State has nine tackles behind the line of scrimmage tonight. Third down and ten. Bringing five, trying to set up a screen. Mississippi State, boy, it looks like they got 13 guys out there right now, the way they're flying to the football. Yeah. I, I couldn't say it any better, Dave. They are flying around. That's the end of the third quarter, tied at 24 in Athens, Georgia. Some of the scoring plays in this one, JT Daniels with a nice throw to George Pickens. Georgia took the lead 7-3, but then Mississippi State behind Dylan Johnson on his four-yard rush took the lead back. Then there was a big play, the, probably the longest pass play of the game. Jaden Wally, 51 yards from Will Rogers, but then Georgia would respond as they go to their freshman, Jermaine Burton, 48 yards on that reception. We are tied at 24, 15 minutes of football, and possibly more from Athens, Georgia. As the Bulldogs pump this away, fair catch called for by Austin Williams at the 25-yard line. And I tell you what, it's an amazing story what's going on with Mississippi State and the fact that their numbers are so low. For more, let's go down to Lauren Sisler. Yeah, we talked about it in the open that right now Mississippi State only has 49 scholarship players, and that was after their latest round of COVID testing. So this team has really struggled in recent weeks, and it really came down to a decision between the team and the league to decide to move forward. And I think what went into that partially was the fact that none of the units were actually decimated, so they felt like they could come out here and perform and obviously it's playing dividends but think about this you're two and four on the season and this team knows where they are right now they understand that development is critical even in this unprecedented season they're in so every snap and every rep counts and I think that's what's important to remember here and they're playing with a lot of energy and that is what Mike Leach has preached as one of his big philosophies coming in here to Mississippi State yeah must be the team that brings the energy every single night they suit up 
Dylan Johnson on that reception. But here's what they've done is they've kind of taken the air out of this game, right? I mean, they've, they've done their, their part in terms of keeping their defense, which is a limited defense in terms of numbers, off the field for the most part. Yeah, it's been what you mentioned, short intermediate pass game, taking your shots when they are there. But the decision making from your quarterback has been the ultimate, I think, biggest part of this ball game. He's made great decisions with it and has not turned it over. Almost did right there. That could have been picked off. Another short underneath route trying to hit Devontae Payton. But Georgia, Tyreek Stevenson couldn't come up with the football. Yeah, I thought he was just a little late on that one. He had him, he had him open to start and kind of double clustered for a minute. If he gets that football out of his hands a little bit quicker, he has a chance to complete that. But here we are again on third down where they've been pretty good throughout the ball game. And it's that third and five, third and four underneath that range that they've really been good. Complete. Georgia brought some pressure off the edge. Adam Anderson got his hand up, and that's exactly what Dan Lanning was talking about. We got to knock some of these balls down. Yeah, knowing this ball's coming out quick, they understand what type of formation, what they try to do on these particular downs. And you can't get to the quarterback. They talked about it so many times in this ball game. If you can't get to the quarterback, you have to get your hands up, and they've done it on both sides. Georgia and Mississippi State both have been good in that area. Georgia's done it four times today. That may have been the biggest one, forcing a punting situation. Here is Reed Bowman to punt it away. Reed averaging 42 and a half yards per punt this year. Good clean snap, not much of a rush. And a fair catch called for at the 26 yard line. JT Daniels having a nice opening game with the Bulldogs back on the field when we come back. Thank you, Dar. It was a great game. Been there a lot of good games today around the country. And we've got a good one right here in Athens. Georgia and Miss State tied at 24. 14 minutes to go here in the contest. Maybe a little bit more the way this one is playing out. JT Daniels having a heck of a game for the Bulldogs in his first start in a Georgia uniform. Gets his pass underneath. It's caught by Trey McKitty. And Dave, you saw what happened at the line of scrimmage there. He recognized Blitz was coming. He went up, was very calm, changed it, got it all protected up, and got the football out of his hands. Those are some of the things that they talked about. Mentally, he is as smart as anybody on the field. He's like a coach on the field. But you saw it right there in that instance, getting his team into a good play. Picks up five. Daniels, 23 of 29 for 294. He'll hand it off to Kenny McIntosh. McIntosh's first appearance in a while as, after he was injured versus Alabama back on the field. And Dave, here's that previous play. Blitz is coming, calmly walks up to the line of scrimmage. Let's get this protected up. Signals on to the outside. Hey, here's what I want, here's what I need. And then now I know I need to go with the football. We pick up the blitz, balls out of his hands, and now you got an opportunity to be successful on that particular play. But then you lose three yards on the rush and look at third and eight. You were at second and five, now you're third and eight. As a play caller, that's got to be frustrating as Mississippi State has totaled 10 tackles for loss tonight. Bringing some heat. Georgia picks it up. JT pump fakes. Boy, he was waiting for his guy Pickett's to get open, and he finally did, and that'll be a first down. They just, this offensive line hasn't done a lot in the run game, but watch what they do in the pass game. They do a good job of picking this blitz up. Look at that. He's got time to survey, moves over just a little bit. Like you mentioned, double pump twice and still that time to throw this football. And Pickett finally wins on the outside. Big time conversion to keep the chains moving. Well, you just wonder how much does Mississippi State have in the tank defensively? Daniels coming near side. Pass is caught. Demetrius Robertson, his eighth catch of the year, his first one tonight, and another first down for Georgia. The arm strength. This ball was thrown from the other hash. Watch this football get all the way outside to the numbers and throws it at the level where only his receiver can get it with an underneath defender there. Arm strength and then also a good route on the outside. He'll toss it. James Cook. 
well played there by Mississippi State. That was a nice job on the perimeter by Sean Preston. Three hundred and twenty-four yards through the air for JT Daniels in this Georgia offense. It's like golf right now for Georgia, I think. You know, like sometimes your T-ball game will be great, but you can't putt, right? Well, they finally get their pass game going, but they can't run. <laughs> Daniels drops it off a la Mississippi State, and that'll be a first down as Zamir White dives to the 30-yard line, and they'll move the chains. Yeah, you, can, you can see the comfort level here from JT Daniels. He's going to get the blitz, but watch him drift a little bit. Drift away from the line of scrimmage to buy himself a little bit more time and allows his back to sneak out and just drops it off for a big game. Daniels lofts it up, going toward the end zone. Incomplete. Kiaris Jackson was in the end zone and couldn't hold on. Oh, wow. He was wide open. Had another big chance down the sideline for a touchdown. And see if right at the end, Emerson comes over right at the end. Does he? Oh, I think that's just a drop. Emerson comes over right at the end and kind of oh, gets his shot. hand in there. Yeah, that's a drop. You got to catch those if you care, Jackson. So now it's second and ten from the 30-yard line. JT under pressure, dodges a couple of guys, fires toward the end zone. That one is incomplete, looking for Pickens. Well, I think it's safe to say JT Daniels has the pocket awareness now. Watch him moving inside the pocket. They had a clear shot on him coming right down the pipe, makes a couple guys miss, and still is able to throw a rope down the middle for a near touchdown. They watched the movement here. They got him locked up. Aaron Lee has him locked up and makes a guy miss, climbs back in the pocket, and then delivers a strike down the middle. Oh, two passes back to back that should have been caught. They will throw it again on third and ten. Daniels on the run. Pass caught by Pickens. That'll be a first down at the 18-yard line. Uh, you got a flag back near the area of holding, oh, though. Boy. Holding. Offense, number 70. Ten-yard penalty. Repeat, third down. Yeah, this is on Warren McClendon. On the, see on the right side, right tackle. And... Marquis Spencer just beats him to the inside. Good job of kick, continue to fight as Spencer and forcing a hold on the outside from McClendon. That is three straight plays for Georgia where they have hurt themselves. Two drops and now a holding call. Yeah, those are the kind of self-inflicted wounds that have hurt in, in the game that they've lost. Just cannot have that after looking like you picked up the first down. Now you're back in third and 20. From the 40-yard line, again, pressure comes. JT has a clean pocket, airs it out wide open down the field. Caught this time, touchdown, Kiaris Jackson. The third time is a charm for Georgia in the end zone on this drive. And this is man-on-man -man here. Mississippi State goes cover zero blitz, no safety in the middle of the field. And the defensive back gets caught flat-footed. Sean Preston and Kiaris just runs right by him down the seam here. And you see him coming right in the middle of the living room, right down the middle, and just drops an absolute dime to Kiaris for the touchdown. Kiaris dropped one a moment ago, but makes up for it. His third touchdown reception of the year. Georgia back out in front. Oh, the legend Vince Dooley. He would be disappointed in the run game for Georgia tonight, but he would love this last play. As we take a look at the five-star play of the game brought to you by. Well, if you're Zach Arnett, defensive coordinator for Mississippi State, you want this call back. At third and 20, you play cover zero, 
and they've taken deep shots the entire series and you leave your corners on the island with no help. It's a nice job of Kiers and, and also JT Daniels finding the favorable matchup and laying it to him, giving him a chance. JT Daniels, 27 to 35, 370 yards and four touchdowns and no picks. But now it's time to take a look at a five-star play of the game brought to you by Yellowwood. Coming right down to pipe here, big time throw on third and 20. And it goes for a touchdown. Here's Jackson been one of the main deep threats, been consistent all year for him. And now JT Daniels has showed off his arm today, has shown that big play ability with 370 yards on the day, four touchdowns in his debut as a Georgia Bulldog. Mississippi State has given up a lot of yards in the past game. They've been stout in the run game, but JT Daniels has had an answer for him in the past game. Now, can Will Rogers answer the bell for Mississippi State? Another pass underneath. They'll pick up seven and a half, maybe eight, as that one goes to the local product, if you will. Aquavius Marks, the young man out of Atlanta, Georgia, the true freshman Carver High School. There should be no panic for Mississippi State. They have had an excellent game plan coming in here. A short, intermediate, being patient, throwing the football to the guys who are open. Has to continue that on this drive. Underneath, first down. He'll go with Dylan Johnson, who just checked in for Mark. So they go from freshman to freshman. It has been a long time since Mississippi State has won in Athens. You got to go back to 1956. Have Down a touchdown. To, yep. Have to continue to give Mike Leach a lot of credit. Having his ball club ready to go to be in this position late in the fourth quarter, I'm sure he would have said, yeah, I'll take this. Georgia bringing three. Again, dump it off underneath. This time, Dylan Johnson wrapped up in a hurry after a gain of a couple. Georgia's kind of pushed those linebackers up a little bit closer to the line of scrimmage. In the first half, I mean, they were just, they were picking up six to eight yards on those underneath routes, and now it looks like they're picking up three to five, which changes the dynamic a little bit. Yeah, Mississippi State on the outside, they continue to try to go vertical with their routes, so they're forcing these guys to play a little bit deeper. But Rodgers done a good job of taking it and just dropping it down when he needs to. Not much happening there. Reception by Griffin. He'll get a couple of yards, but it'll bring up third down. Tyson Campbell on the outside playing that inside slot position. Recognizes it soon and attacks it before the offensive lineman can get out to block him. Just a good job of reading and recognizing here, but third and five is a good spot for Mississippi State. They need to get it to the Georgia 47-yard line. Rodgers dropped. Sacked for the first time tonight. Jermaine Johnson will get credit for the sack. Georgia coming with four again in the rush. Had to spy out, so actually only coming with three. And then finally getting home. That's what Dan Lanning loves. And you see Johnson on the outside getting rewarded for his effort. His fourth sack of the year for the senior. He transferred in from Independence Community College. Three straight three and outs now for Mississippi State. Their catch called for at the 18-yard line. And now Georgia will try to chew up this clock. They're up a touchdown, trying to hold on against Mississippi State. JT Daniels has thrown for four touchdowns in his Georgia Bulldog debut. How about this, DJ? In your first career start against Boise State in 2005, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you threw for five touchdowns. He's on the way there. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that ball almost picked off. Shocks this offense, Georgia offense, behind JT Daniels. Nothing to do Looking with the good. offense, Dave. Ah. Tomorrow <laughs> is my good partner's ah. Dave Neal's birthday. 
from our entire crew, Dave, we want to make sure we wish you a happy birthday. Everybody out there watching, make sure you go and follow him on Twitter, Dave Neal Sports, and wish him a happy birthday tomorrow. Young oh, man, man here. Thank you, Shock. Yeah, Absolutely. young man. Thank yeah. you for saying that. I think that's the best part of that whole conversation. <laughs> young man. <laughs> happy birthday, cool. brother. Thank you. And 35 again. Incomplete off the hands of Zamir White. Dave, you didn't think the crew would let you just get off here without, you know, everybody wishing you a happy birthday. I'm the only one who can probably speak to you besides Lauren, so, but it's coming from our entire <laughs> crew, so we want to yeah. make sure, make sure we wish you a happy birthday, man. Hey, yes, I can speak up too. Happy birthday, <laughs> Dave. It's been a lot of fun working with you guys on this football game, and of course, uh, we're playing football. It's good. So happy birthday yes. to you. And, uh, you know, apparently you're enjoying yourself uh, not at home, somewhere a little <laughs> bit more luxurious these days. Yeah, now that we can be mobile with our equipment, I'm just about, I could be anywhere. Pass is caught. Speaking of anywhere, twisting and turning is Demetrius Robinson with the reception for Georgia on a third down and 10. That was a huge pass from JT Daniels. Well, this is pretty good coverage, but sometimes when you throw a ball like this, that's absolutely perfect thrown in the right spot. It's hard for a defender to have anything he can do against it. JT Daniels continues to play at a high level in his first start. And you've seen a lot of guys making some plays today. This receiving core, who has been talked about a lot for Georgia, has finally started to come into his own, as we see here today. Guys making plays all over the field. I tell you what, as this game has gone on, I have gotten more and more impressed with JT Daniels. Zamir White, this is their most impressive run of the day, that's for sure, as the clock goes under 545. But, you know, I got to think the first couple of series, he was trying to play it cool, but you know he was nervous. But JT Daniels, you mentioned something earlier, Shock, in this game that really grabbed my attention. His feel for the pocket changed dramatically from the first couple possessions of this game. Yeah, you can see it. He just was uncomfortable. He took a sack earlier in the ball game where you felt like he probably could have got away. Well, there was a play later in the ball game where he had a guy coming barreling down on him and he made a couple guys miss. Georgia going to the run game flags. using Samir White. Another first down inside the 40 and this is exactly what Georgia wanted to do on this possession. There is a flag down however. You know, we've had 713 yards passing in this game. Personal foul, blindside block, offense, number zero. 15-yard penalty from the previous spot, repeat, second down. Well, that's the big true freshman tight end, Darnell Washington, at a Las Vegas, Nevada. If he does something wrong, it's, it's easy to spot at 6'7", <laughs> 260. Yeah, that's a, uh, that's a pretty big tight end there that it's hard to miss if he has a penalty of that caliber. So it hurts because you had another positive gain. It would have went into the run category where right now you only have 13 yards rushing. But I'm sure they would love a good four-minute drive to put this ball game away and the offensive line putting it on their shoulders. 613, uh, 713 yards passing, and we have a total of uh, 47 yards rushing. JT Daniels dropped at the 29-yard line. So there's still some life left in this Mississippi State defense. Errol Thompson, their leader, with the sack. Yeah, absolutely. It's still plenty of time left in this ball game. Mississippi State has a couple timeouts. And just here comes the pressure here. He starts to slight roll. And he just runs right around Justin Schaefer there, who didn't even get a hand on him. But this Mississippi State defense has continued to fight and trying to give his offense one more chance at this ball game and get the ball back. And you see, I guarantee you, you probably won't see the same coverage they played last time yeah. on third and 20. JT Daniels, they will rush three and drop eight. They'll go a little delay handoff to McIntosh. He'll get it to the 40-yard line, and Mississippi State's defense, there aren't many of them on the trip, folks, but they just stood tall and got the football back for their offense with four minutes and change as the clock continues to tick down here in the fourth quarter. What a way to be resilient if you're Mississippi State. I mean, it looks like Georgia was going to go down and 
continue to run it and possibly get in the field goal range, but you get a couple penalties, you get a sack. Now you're going to get the football back with about three minutes to go. If you're Will Rogers, you got three minutes to go on the road to win a ball game or go tie it up. Camarda with a punt. Fair caught at the 10 yard line. Mississippi State, 90 yards away, 331 on the clock. It's coming down to the wire. And how about the true freshman right here with a chance? I don't want to say to make history, but it would be historical nonetheless. Will Rogers trying to lead Mississippi State to tie this up. And possibly, would Mike Leach be a guy if they were able to score to go for two? Would he be that kind of guy? That would be real interesting if they get that opportunity. I don't think he will. I think he would <laughs> yeah. love to take it to overtime or something, but that would be definitely a highlight of the ball game. But this is still plenty of time on the clock for Will Rogers to continue to do what they've done all game. Just make sure he takes care of the football. Well, handed off here on second and three and lose three yards. So now you're looking at third down and six. Oh, you may have got a penalty here on Georgia here late after the play. Bulldogs of Mississippi State haven't won in Athens since 1956. Yeah, there was some kind of skirmish or something happened right at the end of that play. Boy, the way Kirby's reacting. Makes you believe this one's going to go against Georgia. After the play, personal foul, defense number 10, 15 yard penalty, automatic first down. Ooh, Malik Harry. Caught doing something illegal. And that's the last thing you probably you would expect from the senior. He's a senior, he's been around, he's played a lot of football for Georgia, and to see him have a penalty like that in a crucial situation like this, where you just had a negative yardage play, and you was gonna force them into a third and long. And it's always the second guy. Oh my gosh. A little bit of a flop here, but. <laughs> it worked. Rogers pass. Caught out over the 40. Nice grab by Jaden Wally, who had a huge first half, but has been non-existent here in the second half until that grab. Yeah, he's been quiet for the second half for sure, but you see him just uncover across the linebacker's face and makes a contested catch. But nonetheless, a really good catch over the middle of the field to move the chains and to keep the hopes alive for Mississippi State here on this last drive. Wally, the sixth freshman to register a 100-yard receiving game in Mississippi State history. The last was Chad Bumpus in 2009. Kirby Smart bouncing around. He wants a flag. I don't know who's more animated on the sideline, <laughs> Lane Kiffin or Kirby Smart. He looked like he got one. Yeah, he's still inside the box. No receiver in the area. <laughs> you see Kirby going crazy on the sideline. He still he, he, he controls his emotions no pretty well. No foul for intentional grounding. The quarterback is outside the tackle box. The ball in to be on line of scrimmage. Second down. Yeah, Kirby wants an explanation for that one. It looked like he just continued to go backwards. He never really went right or left outside of the original pocket. Kirby's alternating between giving Malik Herring an earful for that personal <laughs> foul and our officiating crew for not calling a grounding penalty. Yeah, but for either second down to 10 now for Mississippi State. Either way, big break for Mississippi State here. You could have been really behind the chains. 2-11 on the clock. Quick hitter underneath, Osiris Mitchell out to the 44-yard line. And you call that pocket where you see where the right tackle is, and you see the hash. He, he never really leaves that hash, never gets outside of that right tackle, continues to go oh, backwards. That's not, even, that's not even close, really, shot. He's a yard, he started on the hash, and it was a yard to the right of the hash. Yeah. 
Kansas City State called a break on that one. Georgia bringing three. Dylan Johnson on third and seven. It'll be fourth down and about four. Mississippi State will Mississippi take State. a timeout. Second charge timeout of the half. Call it fourth and five. And the Pirate calling up a play here. Yeah, I like the play call, though. You, you gotta just get the ball out of his hands to give yourself a reasonable chance of picking up this fourth down. They've been in this fourth and five, or this third and five, fourth and five range throughout the ball game and found ways to pick it up. And coming in, they were really good on third down coming into the game. Not coming into the game, but today they've been pretty good. Big fourth down call here. You gotta find one of his key guys, Os Cyrus Mitchell. Jaden Wally's been the guy who's been big for him. Don't forget SEC football final coming up after this one with Dari, Coach Chiz, Chris Doring, Roman Harper. We'll break it all down for you, discuss the day's action. But we still have some football left to be played here. A fourth down coming up, fourth and five. Neither team has gone forward on fourth down tonight. Mississippi State on the year, eight out of 12 on fourth down, 67% clip. They got to get it to the Georgia 49 if they want to stay alive at Athens, Georgia. Last time they were able to get to Rodgers with just a four-man rush. See if that front four can get home. They do get home. And that'll do it. Georgia will hold on for the victory with the sack by Aziz Ojolari. The second sack of the night for the Bulldogs from Georgia. When you need a play, you call on your guy who leaves the team in sack, and look at the speed around the edge. Knocks that hand down and just gets around the corner and nowhere to go for Will Rogers. And that defensive line, once again, wins the ball game up front for the Georgia Bulldogs, getting home on a big time play there on fourth down to turn the ball over. Will Rogers. Heck of a night, though, 41 of 52, 336 at a touchdown for the true freshman out of Brandon, Mississippi. And I'm going to say this, Georgia's going to win this ball game, but knowing what we know about what Mississippi State brought to Athens, Georgia in terms of yeah. numbers and the number of players yeah. and what they have gone through and all the turmoil, I guess, with this roster, what a job by these young men in, in the white jerseys to come in here and put up this kind of fight. Yeah, there won't be any moral victories, but like you just mentioned, this was an outstanding performance to come here on the road with a lot of your key players not here, a couple guys on defense, a couple of your starters not even making the trip, and to take this ball game down to the last minute on the road speaks volumes of what Mike Leach has done. And for Georgia, you get to see JT Daniels. I mean, how about this? 401 through the air. I think Georgia's got their new starting quarterback. Yeah, he showed up today. He showed exactly why people were so excited to see him play. And he's going to be exciting right here for a long time. And I think Georgia fans will be excited on what they saw tonight from him. How are you not excited? 28 to 38, four touchdowns and 401 through the air. The Dogs will take the victory as they push their record to five and two and flush that Florida loss out maybe a little bit, not completely. Meanwhile, Mississippi State goes to two and five. Big night for Georgia's latest starter at quarterback, JT Daniels, as Georgia wins it 31 to 24. So for my partners, DJ Shockley, Lauren Sisler down on the sidelines and the rest of our exceptional SEC network crew, this is Dave Neal saying so long everybody. SEC football final is on the way. And with that, we welcome you into the studio. Hello. All right. <laughs> Football final, we're going to fire it up officially in just a minute.